Good day, everyone. My name is Lance Sizek, and I'd like to introduce, uh, pardon me, <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody for coming online today. Uh, we have a very exciting presentation. It's another installment in Horiba's webinar series. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Lance Sizek. I'm the Western Regional Sales Manager, myself, along with Mick Dolan Mayer, the Eastern Regional Sales Manager. We have Norio Kobayashi. He is our North American product specialist. Uh, the three of us, along with Stevie Lee, our incredible marketing manager, and then we have our fearless leader, Dr. Frank Thomas. We make up your North American uh, Hariba Process and Environmental Sales Group. Um, did, uh, just a few simple things uh, to cover here. One is that if you have any questions about the course of these conversations, we ask that you please enter them into the question box. And then once we're through with the uh, presentation here, uh, I will proctor those questions along with Norio and we will hopefully be able to get you the answers uh, that you are looking for. So without further ado, we'll move on to the next one here. Um, one quick thing here before we get started on the whole presentation uh, is that our social media presence is something that we've really liked to step up here over the past few uh, a few months um, and that's again thanks to Mr. Stevie Lee. Norio could you move the slide to the next one please? There we go. Um, we're very proud of what we've accomplished here in the past year or so since everybody's been under this uh, uh, COVID nightmare for lack of a better term. Um, this presentation along with all the other webinar series um, presentations that we've done can be found on our YouTube channel. So just jump onto YouTube, search for Hariba Process and Environmental, um, subscribe and you'll have access to all those presentations. There's a lot of information there. Uh, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all those fun social media sites. If you have any suggestions as far as what you'd like to see or upcoming uh, presentations for our webinar series we all we are all ears um, so if you have any suggestions please do please do let us know through those formats or if you want to just email us directly that's also an option as well so the agenda for today uh, I'm going to give you a, a very brief 30,000 foot view of who is Hariba uh, we'll talk a bit about the Houston facility I'll briefly touch on the products and then I'll pass it over to Norio so he can talk a bit about the new wall mounted VA 5000 again very excited about this um, see a lot of potential for that so uh, who is Hariba well we were founded in 1953 we are headquartered in Kyoto Japan uh, and we were formed under the uh, title of an analysis and measurement technology company. So since 1953, we've uh, grown to around 7,200 uh, employees globally, and we all work out of 49 different global locations, although things are a bit different now. Everybody seems to be working from home, so uh, I think we could probably say 7,200 global locations. Um, uh, and then over the past year, our fiscal is in from April to April, so we've done uh, 1.8 billion in US dollars in sales um, over the last year or so. So we're very proud with that, especially considering you know what's happened with COVID and all. So a bit more specifically, um, you know, where are those 7,200 employees? How has Hariba grown? There are five business segments that fall under the Hariba umbrella. One is the automotive test systems, which is probably globally our most well-known. Uh, this is for automobile emission testing. If anybody remembers what happened to Volkswagen a few years ago, that was compliments of Horiba's emission analyzers. We helped figure out what was going on. Uh, and then there's the uh, process environmental group, which is our division. This is uh, emissions, air quality, as well as water quality. Um, and then there's the medical division, which has been very busy, uh, the semiconductor group and the scientific group. So all five of those business segments are what make up Horiba as a company. So a bit more specifically about what's covered here in the North American um, sites. So what you see here are all the sites that cover for all five of the business segments. More specifically for the process and environmental group, we wanna focus on the Pasadena, Texas location and the Irvine, California location. Pasadena, if you're not familiar, is uh, 20 miles or so southeast of Houston. Um, Irvine is uh more of our admin we do have some engineering here but we've shifted quite a bit of our um product manufacturing from Irvine to Houston here over the past year um so a bit more about the Houston facility was 
formerly Cameron Process, founded back in 1985. Hariba was purchased, uh, or it was purchased by Hariba in 2012. Um, so then we started the construction on this new building. It's a fantastic building um, in 2018, and it's obviously since opened. It's all 100% Hariba employees. What does that mean? These are CAD designers, project managers, electricians, mechanical engineers, manufacturing. We have some of our admin for our integration group as well. Um, so it's a definitely a very busy facility. So a bit more about the capabilities that we can do out of there. Um, we have, as you can tell, um, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30 years almost of um, uh, experience when it comes to integration and when it comes to emission and emissions and building analyzer system integration. So that experience gives us the ability to provide turnkey solutions when it comes to either analyzers or analyzer shelters regardless of what the scope may be if you want just an analyzer that's fantastic if you need an analyzer in a shelter that's great too uh you know we've got the capability to do pretty much anything that you want uh, we offer field service as well as embedded service contracts meaning that we have some of our larger customers uh whether they actually pay to have one of our employees on site full time to be able to handle maintenance um any installation any startup or any commission or you know anything of that so we're a, a full service uh, organization from that perspective as well as well as we do we do also rata offer rata testing as well so um if you have any questions about that please feel free to contact either either mick or myself and we'll be happy to help you get uh pointed in the right direction a few um tidbits of information regarding factory capabilities and its capacity as i said 30 plus years of doing system integration so you know what is that yeah, what does that get you? Get you uh, sample system, sample conditioning system construction. We can build racks. We can integrate our analyzers, obviously. But I think something that's not very widely known that we really like to hang our hat on is our ability to integrate non pariba analyzers. So if you have a different manufacturer's product, whether it be a DC, a mass spec, um, an opacity meter, um, a Durag dust meter, we have the capability and the knowledge to be able to integrate those types of products into our shelters or into the shelter that you may be looking for whether it's an entire shelter or whether it's a cabinet or whether it's a wall mounted unit we have the experience to do that uh, again full process electrical and mechanical integration the building is large enough uh, to handle quite a bit around 30,000 square feet which gives us a capability of putting up to 22 shelters 10 by 20 by 9 feet um, sorry that's not metric my friends we'll have to do a little bit of math on that um in climate controlled environments as well as a room for an additional eight shelters outdoor in a covered testing area so we've got the capacity to to really hammer out some uh, pretty substantial um, shelters and racks and things of that nature as well so um i spoke a little bit about hariba analyzers if you've been in the loop and you've been on some of our webinar series uh presentations these will all be very familiar to you um, there are presentations on our YouTube channel which have been uploaded on each one of these products, the trace gas analyzer, the GA line, the portable gas analyzer, which is extremely popular these days, um, the uh, PG series, then we have the ambient air monitor, the AP, we have our flagship product, uh, the Enda 7000, as well as um, the Enda 5000, which was just brought over from Japan. It's a little smaller uh, version of the Enda, which is used um, for uh, mostly in waste disposal uh, uh, types of environment. And then obviously we have the VA5000. Um, this is tried and true technology that we've had. It's very successful. It sells very well as well and it performs very well. Uh, so for us to be able to upgrade this to provide our customers with an even better solution, it's a very exciting time for us. Um, so with that being said, that's really all I've got. So I'll pass it over to Norio so he can go into a bit more detail. I'm gonna take it away, Norio. All right, <clears throat> thank you, Lance. Um, and thank you everybody uh, for uh, taking the time um, for this webinar session. Uh, my name is Norio Kobayashi. I am a product specialist with Horiba. And uh, uh, today uh, we are so excited to announce you uh, guys uh, that we are launching the uh, new uh, format type of the uh, analyzer, the VA5000, to be uh, the mount 
warm up type. And I, uh, I'm going through uh, with this introduction. All right, um, here is the uh, outline of the uh, uh, VA5000 wall mount. As you can see, uh, the picture on the right side, there are the flat five inch touch panel screen, uh, which is accessible from outside of the cabinet. And also you can see uh, the bolt excluder uh, on the top uh, right here. Let me take uh, this uh, laser pointer here. Yeah, this is the, the bolt excluder right there. Um, the system on this slide is showing a Z-Purge version and uh, uh, purge gas will be introduced from uh, the here. All right, so, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, the B5000 uh, originally can measure up to four parameters by one unit. And it can be installed uh, in a multiple area, including uh, the general purpose area in a class one div two uh, group BCD. Okay, and uh, class one div two can select from a Z purge type and X purge. And uh, X purge is selected uh, when the flammable hydrocarbon presents uh, presents in the sample. So other than that, the Z purge will work for the class one div two area, generally speaking. Um, and for your interfa uh, interface, uh, TCP IP and uh, mode bus communication is available. And analog, uh, analog and digital in and out puts are available too, right there. And the standard cabinet is a NEMA 4 and IP56 equivalent. Um, here are the parameters that uh, the VA5000 can measure. As you can see, uh, uh, NOx uh, can go from 0 to 20 ppm at the lowest range and up to 5,000 ppm. And you can select the NOx measurement from a chemiluminescence detection or uh, uh, in conventional NDIR. And methane is measured by NDIR and zero to 100 ppm to uh, up to uh, 200 ppm. And SO2 is from 100 ppm to 10% here. Uh, NTO is from 100 ppm to 5,000 ppm, and CO is 50 ppm to 100 percent, 100%. And ammonia can go from 100 ppm to 1,000 ppm, and CO2 is from 50 ppm and 100 percent. O2 is 5 percent to 100 percent. Uh, and this is the uh, these are the, uh, other like parameters which is not listed on the brochure like a freon or propane or other hydrocarbons uh, which may have absorption of the NDIR can be uh, measured by VA5000. But uh, all of the components is all depends on the uh, gas composition gas condition. Um, so uh, we need to look at the uh, uh, what uh, you know uh, interference could be uh presenting uh on this measurement and we will provide the uh, proper uh optical filters to uh to cancel those interference so uh we have many many uh, a lot of potentials there uh to do that to work with the uh, a lot of applications so if you have uh, uh, any project involves uh you know the measurement uh please feel free to ask us uh and contact us mick or uh, uh lance gonna be in help with. All right, um, this is the uh, the requirements for the installation. Um, you know, uh, the dimension is a 24, uh, 24 inch and by 24 inch and by a 8 inch dips. And uh, uh, holy, uh, the VA5000 is to be installed uh, in the climate uh, temperature control, the cabinet or shelter. And a wall mount, of course. And the conditions, uh, the instruments air we you need, uh, we need the uh, utility of the instruments air at uh, the 0.7 cubic uh, flow uh, met, um, meter here. And a sample pressure is 0.72 psi uh, for Z purge and a 2 psi for uh, X purge. Okay, and a sample flow is 0.5 liter per minute and the temperature is ambient air level. 
and the central gas has to be a dust free and has to be a dry and no cross gas inside of the sample. Uh, if the gas contains those uh, things, uh, we will get rid of, you know, get rid of them of, uh, in during the, the sample system. So uh, the wall, VA5000 wall mount basically works with your sample system. And uh, uh, if you uh, want to keep that existing sample system, that's fine. The VA5000 can just simply work with your existing uh, legacy system. Okay, uh, let's talk about the uh, display and the menus interfaces. Uh, the main display is showing uh, measurement information and uh, showing up to four components here. Uh, and uh, this one is showing uh, uh, O2 corrected measurement data. Um, so this is, you know, uh, it, this page is considered for the same application, obviously. And uh, uh, this is a trend graph is showing uh, the, how the parameters, uh, the reading is moving uh, during the some uh, specific uh, time frame. And you can change that time, of course. And, uh, uh, you know, this is all to see that any upset condition um, happened or uh, what the, those, uh, the parameters are changing during that upset conditions. And blowback setting is also available for the same application. So uh, the VA5000 can be uh, the controlling the uh, solar noise to uh, uh, the feeding the blowback air at the probe. Um, <clears throat> and concentration alarm settings, uh, you can set the each uh, parameters uh, concentration alarm, like high, 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 or low, low, low um, alarms and set the, uh, the certain, you know, the concentration to uh, the trigger the alarms. And finally, this display is showing um, the multiple, um, many uh, information of analyzer inside of the, uh, you know, the body. We are tracking um, basically, um, you know, the, all of the temperature of the cells uh, and the voltages and, you know, the pressures, stuff like that. Uh, all of the information is very, very useful for your diagnosis. <clears throat> all right, um, this one is uh, the main display and uh, I'm trying to uh, look more uh, detail here. And as you can see, it shows the four parameters at the same time. It's uh, very readable and the measurement value is uh, shown here. Um, and uh, uh, these are showing some range information. So NO is measuring 168 ppm at the 500 ppm range. And once once you tap this 500, you know the button, then uh, you can select the different type of the uh, the measurement branch. It's it's pretty easy um, for the operation. Um, you can see that the calibration button right there. Um, if you go uh, do the uh, calibration mode and just simply tap here and do the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, command some calibration here, um, there's a menu button and the trend graph right there. And if you go to the trend graph again, uh, it's showing uh, each line is showing the measurement trend in full scale, and you can adjust the timeline of course. And if you don't need to show the specific uh, parameters, then you can just simply, you know, uncheck the box. Then uh, you can, you know, focus on what you're looking at. Uh, in the menu, uh, there are setting modes. Uh, you can schedule blowback timing. Uh, this is used to, uh, you know, the puts the air uh, in the probe and backwards to the sample point. Uh, so that the dust corrected on the filter goes away back to the process. Um, this function always helps the performance of the probe filter and the lifetime longer for the probe and the pump. Uh, you can schedule uh, starting date, time, and interval, and how long you want to blow. 
So it's a pretty flexible to you know manipulate those CF functions and those uh, you know it depends on your conditions. So um, just um, just keep in mind uh, we have more function or we can expand the more functions by adding you know, another PLC or uh, system up uh, uh, as integrating uh, the tanky solution. And as well as the blowback settings, you can schedule auto calibration, of course. Um, and here is another display I just talked about. Uh, the, with the dose information, our technician, our technician can see that, analyze the status, and give you the more specific advice what to do with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the state situation if the analyzer doesn't work uh, properly. And we are tracking those internal information for uh, the diagnosis as well. All right, uh, let's take a look uh, at the outlines of the uh, uh, the BA5000 wall mount here. Uh, the drawing on this page is the BA5000 wall mount Z purge unit. So you can see that the Botex cooler and the signal wiring access from the from right side and the communication wiring which is the tcp ip multiverse communication wiring comes through uh, the left side and the purge gas inlet is on the left and as you can see here is a sample inlet and, and two uh, carrier gas inlet and then gas outlet and then power wiring comes from the bottom uh, that's the uh, how uh, the bf 5000 is designed um, x purge version is um, the system which controls the pressure and the turning on and off electricity. Um, the system is watching the pressure inside of the cabinet. And uh, when you lose the pressure inside, then the system shut down the whole power supply so that no electricity will touch the flammable gas and uh, prism, uh, which will be preventing the explosion or risk of the explosion so that's the uh, the export uh, version all right um that this is the uh, flow diagram showing a uh, wall mount sample system and uh, wall mount va 5000 and the general purpose version so as you can see these, you know, NDIR uh, or the PMA uh, or zirconia galvanic O2 will be installed in this series. And uh, um, if you are to measure the NOx uh, by one unit, then uh, we're going to put the NOx converter inside uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, NOx converter will convert NO2 to NO. Um, the, basically, the sample is uh, sample panel is designed to push the sample gas to fill into the analyzer. Uh, if the BF5000 works with exi existing uh, the sample uh, unit, then uh, we just need to tune the sample pressure and the flow to feed into the, the gas analyzer uh, because uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> The, the sample gas condition not in that need to be uh, within that specification, which is 0.72 psi pressure. Um, the most of the uh, uh, other analyzers may accept the uh, the wider range, but uh, uh, the lower we just simply need the uh, lower uh, the sample flow. And just for your uh, just for uh, just just for your information. Uh, Horiber has also our uh, own design Warman sample system is uh, also available and uh, um, so we are flexible however you like uh, for your project our uh, project this is another flowchart showing Warman sample system and Warman VA5000 with P MPA02 analysis um, as you can see, uh, the wall mount sample system design is the uh, same as the one for NDIR. And uh, analyzer is, uh, um, this, this one is just the Z-Purge version. And you can see a purge gas inlet, right? And a Voltex cooler inlet uh, here. And here's the vent. 
Other than that, the base speed inside will design the same. Um, and uh, just keep in mind the MPA version uh, principle uh, requires, um, you know, um, nitrogen carrier gas, and so we need uh, the N2 inlet uh, to fit in the nitrogen. All right, and this is another example of flow charts showing Wallman sample system and the Wallman VA5000 with chemiluminescence CLD. The design of the sample system is a little bit different from the one for MPA or NDIR. Um, sample will be uh, pushed from inlet, and here is another line uh, for the uh, zone generation. See this ozone generation, and because uh, chemical needs uh, ozone to react with NO, um, let me explain a little bit about the chemical principle. Uh, the when uh, the nitrogen monoxide react with ozone, the part of the NO is oxidized to become uh, nitrogen dioxide. The part of the NO2 generated is uh, in the excited uh, excited state, and uh, it radiates light when it returns to the uh, ground state. The luminescence of NO is proportional uh, to the concentration. Uh, for this reason, oh, excuse me. Um, the, for this reason, um, uh, for this reason, we need uh, this air supply line. Uh, for the other option, you can feed instrument air. Uh, to the uh, air inlet instead of using ambient air so that the sample unit will be uh, the simpler. Uh, it's going to be the similar like, uh, uh, you know, NDIR version. All right, uh, let's talk about some technical information, how uh, we measure those parameters. The VA5000 uses NDIR measurement method NDIR covered from the PPM level to percentage. We keep the measurement cell at 140 degree F, keeping the cell warm. Um, this helped um, the improvements, the measurement result. Um, also, uh, ambient, you know, the keeping the cell warm is, you know, ambient temperature change. Um, you know, ambient temperature change is one of the big factors of the fluctuation of the measurement value. So, uh, you know, keeping the, you know, say warm is uh, one of the way to avoid that the uh, uh, effect of the uh, temperature changes. So, and basically, you know, stable temperature for the cell, it will give us stability. And also, uh, you know, it helped to, uh, to keep the sample gas dried and the moisture away. Uh, moisture may capture uh, the sulfur stuff and it damage the cell and causing the drift. So uh, we're trying to, uh, to keep the gas dried and it, it chilled at the five degrees C once and then back to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, warm conditions so that uh, we can keep the sample gas dried and uh, we don't have to be worried about any moisture and other corrosion uh, things. <clears throat> um, MDIL cell has atmospheric pressure correction as standard and always works for the, uh, the compensation to each component. Um, here is how MDIL works. The sample gas flows uh, in, in and out of the sample cell and IR light alternately radiates through the sample cell and the sealed reference cell the controlled by a chopper. Right, um, and the gas being measured will absorb uh, IR energy light uh, in the sample cell, and it reduces the pressure that detectors the gas chamber. And because of this, you know, the change of the pressure, uh, the detector gas flows from the one chamber to the uh, another chamber, second chamber. The amount of flow is proportional to the gas concentration. We're looking at the how you know the detector 
uh, the condition is changing. And the compensation, uh, compensating detector measures only the interference gas on the other way. So, uh, you know, the interference compensation is, is made properly. Um, I want to say this, you know, uh, emphasize one of the things why Holiba is great is because Holiba is a manufacturer of the, those detectors, IRSOs, cell, optical filters, and flow sensor, etc. So we had, you know, we designed those, you know, core parts for the analyzers, and uh, we are we are responsible for the all of the design, the quality, and to keep, you know, our analyzer entire analyzer design great. Um, another method. Uh, module chemiluminescence. Um, chemiluminescence is well known as lower detection for the NO. Um, chemiluminescence modules provide you uh, 0 to 20 ppm for VA5000 at the low end, and uh, uh, while NDIR gives you the range about the 0 to 500 ppm. So uh, you can understand, you know, chemiluminescence is widely accepted for the lower concentration uh, monitoring. And also, uh, the majority of the SEMS application uh, users is uses chemiluminescence for the NOx analyzer. Chemiluminescence works when, uh, uh, like I explained, an NO reacts with ozone, and this part of the NO is oxidized to become a nitrogen dioxide, which is NO2, right? And then part of the NO2 generated is in the excited state, and the luminescence of NO, you know, is proportional. Uh, to the uh, 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 concentration. Um, and this is how uh, we measure the NO. Okay. Uh, VA5000 has four types of O2 measurement, MPA, PMA, zirconia, galvanic. And uh, some of you guys may have question which O2 module uh, I should select. So uh, I'll direct you, um, you know, touch the uh, all, all the four principles and to uh, have us a better understanding. Um, MPA is one of the great way uh, uh, to measure O2, and I most recommend this MPA method. Um, you know, generally speaking, O2 um, MPA has the most robust design. Um, I would like to explain how, why that uh, MPA is so much robust. Um, generally speaking, O2 has a strong paramagnetic uh, properties when it is exposed to the magnet field. O2 um, uh, oxygen molecule as uh, uh, are attracted to this magnet. Utilize, <coughs> utilizing this pr principle, uh, we designed our own way to measure oxygen called MPA method. This is a simple schematics to show how it works. Uh, sample gas uh, flow like, uh, you know, uh, from in, in sample gas inlet to outlet, as you can see the blue line here, All right? Um, and there are uh, electromagnetic uh, electromagnet, and while it is off, O2 is not attracted to the magnet because you know uh, electromagnet is off. And this area uh, in the chamber that we you know the feed carrier gas from here, this area which we we feed in nitro nitrogen or as a carrier gas here. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, while electromagnet is off, um, the sample and the carrier gas flows uh, smoothly, right? Because there's no uh, changes in the pressure or flow. And then see the uh, the picture on the right side. And when electromagnet is on, O2 starts being attracted to the magnet. So as you can see, it's a very busy area with the O2 uh, molecules. <clears throat> um, because of this, um, you know, uh, will 
you can't you can just flow you know the nitrogen uh, smoothly as you do as you did uh, and this caused the pressure increase in this chamber and there's a membrane right here and uh, <clears throat> you know the pressure increase band and the membrane and the degree of this bending of the micromembrane is related to uh, the O2 concentration. So we are looking at um, how much the, this membrane uh, in a bending and uh, looking at the, uh, the how the degree is and then um, calculate it and, and then show the reading. Um, the beauty of this method is because a uh, detector uh, does not touch the sample, right? You detect doesn't touch the sample at all because sample goes flow from this, you know, line, which means you don't have to be worried about uh, what the, you know, a cross of gas may be in the sample, uh, you know, some of the uh, corrosion or some of the uh, uh, moisture may contain the sample, but uh, your detector is not touching that at all. So we don't, that's the yeah, the prevent and the keep the uh, uh, the MPA uh, detector lifetime longer. Uh, the paramagnetic PMA O2 module. Uh, this is another way uh, to utilize uh, you know O2 molecular magnetic principle. And the PMA dumbbell. This is widely accepted to the uh, many SEMS users uh, in the state. Uh, this method also uses uh, strong paramagnetic propo uh, properties of the uh, oxygen. The sample comes into the, uh, the chamber and O2 interacts with the magnetic field and causing the dumbbell rotation. Right here, this is dumbbell rotation. And a photocell sends the rotation of the dumbbell, this photocell is located here and light is uh, you know the radiated and to hit this mirror and see the uh, how uh, the light is reflected and a dumbbell and you know dumbbell and um, the photocell sends the rotation of the dumbbell and applies the reverse torque to the uh, dumbbell to return to its original position and the torque applies uh, is linear to the uh, O2 concentration directly Um, zirconium oxide, uh, oxide O2 modules is another way to measure the oxygen. Um, zirconia uh, O2 is considered as another electroanalytic detector for oxygen. A thin layer, you can see here, this thin layer of uh, platinum coats um, a ceramic disc, um, this blue one. And when the zirconia O2 is heated at the 800 degree C, oxygen ion migrates through a, a ceramic disc. So, which cause you know ions flows uh, through the uh, ceramic disc from the you know higher O2 concentration to lower concentration. So, I mean, you know, you have two chamber here, right? Sample gas chamber and the reference gas chamber right there, right? Um, this is divided by a ceramic disc and a one chamber is continuously fed by a sample gas. And the other chamber is continuously fed by uh, the reference air. And oxygen migrates from higher concentration to lower concentration. Um, so, um, you know, the, basically they are trying to take a balance between, you know, the both of the, uh, the chamber oxygen concentration has to be the same. Um, zirconium method is detecting this migra uh, migration and uh, it is uh, proportional to the uh, concentration of O2. And lastly, uh, the Garbank O2 module. Uh, this is one of the smallest O2 sensor. Um, there is um, basically uh, using uh, um, this type of de detection. Um, there's an anode right here and a cathode here. 
um, the both electrodes are immersed to the uh, electrochemical solution. And once O2 oxygen enters through uh, the perme uh, permeable membrane and uh, causing the electrochemical reaction at the uh, anode, right? And an electromotive force resulting from the uh, reaction is measured and it is read to the uh, oxygen concentration. That's how carbonic O2 module is working. So, uh, summary of the molten O2 module. Um, <clears throat> MPA is one of the recommended best way and to measure O2 detector because it has no contact with the sample directly, not affected by the other gases neither too. Right? MP, uh, PMA is universally accepted and no major effect. Uh, <clears throat> durability may be lower than MPA, but still it's pretty durable and robust. Uh, the zirconium method has um, some uh, disadvantage, which is uh, which has interference from uh, the combustion gas such as CO, uh, high, high concentration of CO, or you know hydrocarbons. Um, please make sure the concentration your sample doesn't have the uh, the higher than the 2,000 ppm of CO in a sample. Galvanic method is uh, uh, the lowest cost uh, and uh, work with battery. So you will need to replace uh, periodically, and uh, it is a uh, trend to CO2. And uh, if you know the CO high concentration of CO2 is existing, it will uh, deteriorate the detector. That would be the one of the weak point. So it depends on your you know the gas composition, uh, gas condition. Uh, we can we can select the yeah, the best one. But again, uh, it's rich to you know your budget, your gas condition and uh, the find out the best O2 is the one of the key to be successful the your pro project. All right, the plug and play is a, one of the, uh, the future uh, I wanna introduce here. Um, as you can see, you know, the analyzer is running for 24 seven and maybe uh, be working for uh, more than 15 years, or you expect more than 20 years. Um, but uh, the one of the uh, biggest headache is once you have the problem with detector, uh, that's uh, the making uh, so much uh, act take need so much actions. You need to make a call to uh, your technician and uh, uh, explain it what how it how what happened uh, to your analyzer and uh, explain the result of the uh, action you got advice from a technician or whatever and then finally you you need to ask the technician to come over and find out the root cause and replace the analyzer the bench module stuff like that so uh, it takes involves so much energy so much time so much cost so much money uh, involves in <clears throat> but now <clears throat> the VF 5000 allows you to uh, replace the analyzer module by your own, so you can even you know keep that this silver box, um, keep that silver box in your shelf. So just you can simply you know swap that, and then you can send it back the original silver box to us. So we can fix that, and then come send it back to you. So by doing that, so you can save your time and the cost and the money involved. Is you know invisible money is always a labor, right? So that's the uh, uh, what you can save, and also uh, moreover, you you don't stop your process uh, because this replacement just takes 15 minutes. So this is great advantage uh, for all of us, in, including Horiba and our users. That's the uh, uh, one of the, uh, the things I would like to highlight today. Okay, so uh, that be all uh, to my slide. Um, if you have uh, any questions, uh, I am happy to answer to it. Okay, Noria, we have um, a, a few on here. One of them I think we're going to have to defer. And the first is, are there European certifications available for the VA5000, including QAL1? Um, no, we don't have the European certification, unfortunately. I guess okay. is it for maybe Canada? 
Uh, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, we don't have that certification. Okay. Uh, the next question, if I can get down to it. Hold on. Well, there we go. But do we need to calibrate the unit for each range, or will one calibration for the gas measured be accepted? Yes, um, just one calibration for the gas measure to be accepted. Yeah, basically, <clears throat> you simply need uh, the calibration gas bottle. Um, uh, the concentration uh, should be uh, the one you usually use the range, close to the range you usually use. So just, yes, one calibration is fine. Perfect. And then the last question was, I can hold on real quick. This, okay. Are the VA 5000 sample systems compatible with the old 510 series analyzers? Um, that's a good question. Um, it's basically yes. Uh, but uh, if you are talking about the 510 MPA 510, uh, because the uh, old sample system contains the pump built in inside of the, the sample system, and uh, uh, VA five thousand already have the pump inside, so we don't we don't have to do you know the double dual the sample system uh, dual pumps there. So maybe we will need uh, tune a little bit, but uh, uh, it's it doesn't you know uh, require the many the major modification on there. Okay, uh, we do have one response here that says QEL one is not yet available for the VA VA five thousand and it won't be available for the explosion proof or the class one div two unit. So that's information to pass along there. Uh, and that basically covers all of the questions that were logged on. So um, if anybody has any questions that happen to pop up after this presentation is over, as always, please feel free to reach out to myself, to Mick, or to Nario, and we'll be happy to help in any way that we can. This will also, uh, as I had mentioned, probably first part of next week, um, this presentation will be posted on our YouTube channel. So again, go to YouTube, search for Hariba Process and Environmental, subscribe, and you'll have access to this as well as all the other seminars that we've done. So again, we thank everybody for their time. Uh, hold on, I have one more question. Should I calibrate it with scale up level or does it depend on the measured concentration? Um, let's see, I'm reading that. Um, should I calibrate it up to scale level or it depends on the measured concentration? Is this asking the uh, what range he should select for the calibration? I think. Yeah, um, so the VA 5000 has the uh, multiple ranges available, like uh, the four ranges, uh, 50 ppm, 100 ppm, 200 ppm, 500 ppm, right? And uh, uh, if you are targeting majority of the sample gas about, you know, the 40 ppm or 30 ppm, and then you can select the 50 ppm range. And in this case, uh, you just simply provide the, um, the calibration gas uh, to calibrate the 50 ppm range, which is your calibration gas range would be about 47 ppm to 40, you know, 5 ppm, something like that. Okay. Um, and then there was a, uh, the question was, does this compete with ENDA? Uh, no, it does not compete with ENDA. Obviously, they have some of the same capabilities, but the use for an ENDA and the use for a VA 5000, there's only a little bit of overlap there. So no, it typically would not compete with the ENDA. Mm, yeah, um, maybe uh, he might be uh, confused with the ENDA and VA 5000 because uh, both has a similar capability but right. uh, the, one of the uh, uh, the thing of uh, the VA five thousand is, you know, you are, the VA five thousand can work with any type of sample system, but and the sample system has to be designed by Horiba, because uh, we use the cross flow uh, modulation, which is patented by Horiba, but it's very sensitive to the uh, you know all of the pressure and all of the flow need to be designed properly. 
but uh, the VF 5000 is more flexible to work with the others. So, you know, just uh, uh, it's a, the VF 5000 has more wider capability and applied to any of the uh, other applications that uh, Enda cannot do. But Enda is dedicated for the SAMS application for sure and very, very robust and the perfect solution for the SAMS unit. Perfect. Okay. Um, ben, I also saw your question about a copy of the presentation. <laughs> we'll have something ready for you guys to go um, for all our distributors and all of our reps. We'll have something for you guys probably towards the end of next week. Um, we'll have the literature uh, available for distribution sometime next week as well. So um, we have a few cleanup points that we uh, definitely want to get ironed out before we send it out from uh, mass distribution to the general population. So, um, okay. I uh, don't think there's any more questions. So if anybody else has any questions, again, that pop up, please feel free to um, email one of the three of us, or if you have another contact in um, Hariba, uh, you can certainly email them and they'll know how to get in touch with us. So we thank everybody for their time today. We hope you have a great rest of your week, and we look forward to seeing you soon at the next installment of Hariba's webinar series. Thank you for your time. Thank you.